Welcome back. As we count down to tonight's primary results, some familiar progressive faces are on the ballot tonight, facing down more moderate challengers. In Michigan, member of the progressive group dubbed The Squad, Rashida Tlaib, is facing three challengers, and another so-called squad member, Missouri's Cori Bush, is facing a moderate Senate state senator in her first re-election bid. I'm joined now by the leader of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, Congresswoman from Washington, Pramila Jayapal. Congresswoman, thank you so much for joining me. Appreciate it. It's great to be with you. So as I just laid out, two of your fellow progressive colleagues are facing challenges, challenges across the country, in fact, tonight. But we named two of them, Rashida Tlaib and Cori Bush. Are you worried about their prospects tonight? And, and what do you say to their challengers who are basically making the case that they are too focused on sort of the core principles of progressivism, they don't speak to a broad enough swath of voters, and they aren't focused on getting things done in Washington. Well, Kristen, I would just say that these are two very effective members of Congress. They represent their districts extremely well. Voters selected them because they represent their districts extremely well. They know their districts, and they brought home enormous benefits to their districts. Rashida Tlaib, for example, has been one of the most effective advocates I know on the issue of water. Um, you know, her district in Michigan was dealing with lead in water pipes and the inability of people to be able to drink clean water. And she has been relentless in making sure she brought home enormous amounts of money and got those provisions into, um, into the American Rescue Plan and uh, continuing to advocate for even what? more in the reconciliation bill. Same with Cori Bush, you know, advocating around ensuring that people didn't get kicked out of their homes and that a moratorium continued to ensure sure that uh, people were not going to be kicked out of their homes. So I think they're going to do well tonight. Well, let me ask you, though, because you all wanted to see, um, of course, the infrastructure bill and then what was called Build Back Better get passed together. Um, that never happened. And so there was movement on infrastructure. And now we see this sort of retooled version of that, the Inflation Reduction Act that was just announced by Senator Schumer and Senator Manchin. Do you have any regrets and do your fellow progressives have any regrets about not supporting that early on and trying to take action on that earlier, given now uh, the threats to some well, of your well, colleagues? Let me just reframe that, because actually we did pass both infrastructure and Build Back Better through the House. And if you remember, when we got the infrastructure bill, there was no Build Back Better bill. We insisted that we had to have that. We drafted out the language in the bill and passed that bill through the House on the promise that the senators made to the president of the United States that they would move forward the president's economic agenda. Progressives have always been for the president's economic agenda. That's why we passed Bill Back Better. And this bill that the Senate is now taking up nine months later, which is the president's part of the president's economic agenda, has many of the components that we insisted were in the House bill. So, so you'll support it, everything. Congresswoman, you'll support it? It's not Absolutely everything. I'm going to support it. No, and actually, I think we have a lot of unity that while it isn't everything, we need 50 votes in the Senate. And unfortunately, we didn't have 50 votes in the Senate for the president's economic agenda. So we will take what we can get with 50 votes. Um, and every single one of these pieces that is in the Inflation Reduction Act is extremely important and is a big step forward. So yes, I'm going to support it's it. It's still not clear that you have 50 votes. All eyes are on Senator Cinema. I know she is in a, a different chamber, but are you hearing anything about her reaction? I was talking to a source close to Senator Cinema uh, who noted the fact that this piece of legislation does include that tax provision that she's opposed to. Are you worried she's going to come out and say, I, I can't get behind this? Well, I'm relying on Senator Schumer to bring his chamber and all 50 Democrats along. Um, Senator Cinema did have a lot of um, input into the provisions that were in the original Build Back Better bill. I hope they're talking to her because, listen, Kristen, we need to get this done for the American people. It's going to reduce costs. It's going to make sure people have health care, and it's going to invest in the urgent crisis of climate change. We got to get this done. Finally, I have to ask you about this Democratic strategy of propping up uh, some candidates who they believe would be easier to beat in a general election. John Gibbs is the perfect example tonight. He's obviously running against Peter Meyer. Do you support that strategy or do you think it's too risky or too hypocritical, as some of your colleagues have said? 
Well, I don't like the idea of propping up election deniers. I, I just don't like it. I have to be honest. Um, I don't want to second guess the D-trip. I haven't looked at their polling. I don't know what kind of a difference, you know, their strategy is going to make. But on a values perspective, I, I don't like it. And I'll tell you, Kristen, I was one of the very few people that actually thought Donald Trump could win for the presidency back in 2016. Everybody told me I was crazy, but I felt like that could happen because people, unfortunately, buy into this bully tactic and, and all of the horrible things that he was saying, the divisive things yeah. he was saying. Yeah. So I just don't think we can rely, you know, we can think that we know how voters are going to react. And I think it's it's dangerous. And very quickly, because we're almost out of time, in Kansas tonight, do you see this as a critical test for the extent to which the abortion issue may be energizing for voters, for Democrats in the fall? It's definitely something we're going to watch closely. I don't think it's the be all and end all. Um, if you know if if it doesn't work out the way we want, because primary elections are tough, not everyone votes. Um, but I think November will be different. Um, but certainly, we're watching it closely. All right, we covered a lot of ground on this election day. Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, thank you so much for joining us and for your perspective. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.